Good morning. This is Kent Blaylock with SDG Bible Study. This is the Soli Deo Glory Bible Study coming to you on this Thursday morning, January 5th, 2023, as we continue in our reading of the book, The Jesus Story. We're going to be in the second year of ministry of Jesus Christ, A.D. 30 to March April 8030 to March 8031. So let's get into the reading this morning. On the first Sabbath of Jesus' second year ministry, he was passing through the grain fields with his disciples. As they became hungry, they began to pluck some heads of grain, rub them in their hands, and eat them. When some of the Pharisees saw what they were doing, they said to him, Why are your disciples breaking the Sabbath law? Jesus replied, haven't you read what David did when he and his men were hungry? He went into God's house when Abiathar was the high priest and ate the consecrated bread, which belongs to the priests only, and gave some of and gave some to those with him. Or haven't you read in the law how the temple priests violate the Sabbath and yet remain guiltless? I tell you that someone greater than the temple is here. Had you only known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would never have condemned the innocent. The Sabbath was made for mankind. He continued, not mankind for the Sabbath. So then the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath after he left that place, he returned to the synagogue to teach a man with a crippled right hand was there, and the teachers of the law and the Pharisees were watching Jesus. They wanted to see if he would heal the man on the Sabbath so they could accuse him. They asked Jesus, Is it legal to heal on the Sabbath? He knew what they were thinking. He said to the man with the crippled hand, Get up and stand in front of them. So the man stood up. Then Jesus said to the others, I also have a question for you. Is it legal on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? But they kept silent. So he said, who among you would not rescue one of his sheep that happened to fall into a pit on the Sabbath? And yet a man is worth far more than a sheep. Therefore, it is certainly legal to do good on the Sabbath. In anger, he looked around at them all. He was grieved by the hardness of of their hearts. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. The man extended it and it became just as strong as his other hand. This infuriated the others there and they began discussing with one another what they might do to Jesus. The Pharisees went out and immediately held a council with the Herodians to plan how they might destroy him. Jesus knew this and left there traveling with his disciples to the sea. Huge crowds followed Jesus from Galilee. The Decapolis, Jerusalem, and all Judea, Idumea, and from regions across the Jordans, and his fame spread throughout Syria. People brought to him those who were sick or plagued with any disease or pain as well as the demonized and epileptics and paralytics, Jesus healed them all. A large crowd from the seacoast near Tyre and Sidon heard about what mighty things he was doing and came to him. He asked his disciples to get a boat ready for him in case the crowd grew too large. He had healed so many people that everyone who was ill or demonized pressed forward to touch him. When the demons saw him, they fell down in front of him and wailed, You're the Son of God. Yet he gave the demons strict orders not to reveal his identity. In this way, the words of Isaiah the prophet were fulfilled. Consider my servant, servant who I have chosen, the one I, the one I love and whom I delight. I will put my spirit upon him and he will exercise justice among the nations. 
He will not quarrel or cry out, nor will anyone in the streets hear his voice. He will not even break a bruised reed, nor will he snuff out a smoldering wick until, t until the time he leads justice to victory. The nations will find great hope in his name. Then Jesus climbed a mountain and spent all night praying to God. At daybreak, he called together a select group of his disciples. He named 12 of them the apostles and called them to stay with him that he might send them out to preach. To them, he gave power to heal every disease and sickness and to cast out demons. The name of the 12 apostles are these, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, his brother Andrew, James, and John, the sons of Zebedee, whom he also named Bonerges, meaning the sons of thunder, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, Judas, the son of James, who was also called Thaddeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Then he came down with them and stood in a, in a level place. Many of his other, other disciples, as well as a large crowd of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon, came to him there to hear him and to be healed. Everyone in the crowd kept trying to touch him because great power was coming from him and healing everyone. When he saw the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain and sat down. He looked at his disciples as they came to him, opened his mouth, and then began to teach. Blessed are you who are poor, he said, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who cry now, for you will laugh. But how terrible for you who are rich. You're enjoying the only comfort you'll get. How ter terrible for you who are full. One day you'll go hungry. How terrible for you who are carefree now. One day you'll weep and groan. How terrible for you who are spoken well of by others. For that is how their ancestors spoke of the false prophets. Blessed are those who are horrible. Excuse me. Uh, blurred vision this morning. Blessed are those who are humble. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who mourn. For they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they will inherit the earth. Blessed, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they will be filled. Blessed are those who show mercy, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are those who are pure, whose pure, hearts are pure, for they will see God. Blessed are those who make peace, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who make, blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of righteousness, righteousness for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are you when people hate you and curse you and persecute you and tell wicked lies about you because of me. Blessed are you when they excommunicate you and, and denounce you as evil, all because of the Son of Man. Be glad when that happens and jump for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For their ancestors did all these things to the prophets who lived before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how can it become salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be tossed on the ground and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a mountaintop cannot be hidden, and no one lights a candle and puts it under a basket. Instead, we set it on a lampstand where it gives light for the whole house. In the same way, you should let your light shine before other people so they'll witness the good things you do and respond with praise to your Father in heaven. Don't imagine I come to do away with either the law or the prophets. 
I did not come to do away with them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, as long as heaven and earth exist, neither the smallest letter nor even part of a letter will, will be removed from the law until everything is fulfilled. That is why anyone who breaks even the least important of these commandments and teaches some, someone else to follow his example will be called the least important in the kingdom of heaven. The one who faithfully practices and teaches them, however, will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I want you to know that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, you won't even enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you are not to commit murder. And anyone who commits murder will have to answer to the court. But I tell you that anyone who gets angry at his brother will have to answer to the court. And anyone who calls his brother empty head will have to answer to the Sanhedrin. And anyone who calls another, you fool, will be in danger of being thrown into hell fire. This means that if you are offering your gift at the altar and suddenly remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift at the altar and make it right with him. Then return and offer your gift. When you're heading to court with someone who has filed suit against you, try hard to reach a settlement before you arrive. Otherwise, he may drag you to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the police and the police will throw you into jail. I tell you the truth, you won't get out of there until you have paid the last cent of what you owe. You have heard that it was said you are not to commit adultery. But I tell you that any man who even looks with sexual desire at a woman has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to fall into sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It would be better for one of your organs to be destroyed than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Or if your right hand causes you to fall into sin, cut it off and throw it away. It would be better for a part of your body to be destroyed than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. It was said, if a man divorces his wife, let him give her a document of divorce. But I tell you that if any man divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, he causes her to commit adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you are, are not to swear falsely and you must fulfill whatever vows you make to the Lord. But I tell you not to swear at all. Don't swear an oath by heaven for it is God's throne. Don't swear by the earth either for it is foot, his, his foot's tool. And don't swear by Jerusalem for it is the city of the great king. Don't even swear by your head because you can't make one hair white or black. When you say yes, mean yes. And when you say no, mean no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. You have heard others say an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I am telling you not to resist an aggressor. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, allow him to slap the other one as well. If someone sues you and takes away your tunic, give him your cloak as well. And don't withhold your tunic from the person who takes your cloak. If, if someone forces you to go with him one mile, go two miles. Give to everyone who asks you for something. And don't refuse the person who wants to borrow it from you. If anyone takes something that's yours, don't demand that he return it. You have, a, you have heard others say, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and treat well those who mis mistreat you and bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse and persecute you. In that way, you will be children of your father in heaven. He makes his son to rise on both evil and good people, and he sends rain on both the righteous and the unrighteous. What reward will you have or what credit will be yours if you love only those 
who love you. Even sinners love those who love them. Even tax collectors do that. Or if you greet only your friends, how does that make you different from anyone else? Don't even tax collectors do that? If you help only those who help you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do this. Or if you give loans only to those who you expect to repay you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive the same favor in return. No, you are to love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them, looking for nothing in return. Then you will have earned a handsome reward, and you will be children of the Most High God, because he is good even to those who are ungrateful and wicked. Since your father is compassionate, compassionate you are to be compassionate. Since your Father in heaven is perfect, you are to be perfect. Do be careful not to do your good deeds in front of others in order to be seen by them. If you do, you will earn no reward from your heavenly Father. When you give to the needy, don't blow a trumpet to announce it. This is what the hypocrites do in order to be applauded in the synagogues and on the street. I tell you the truth, they have already received their full reward. But when you give to the needy, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give to the needy in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will himself reward you. When you pray, don't act like the hypocrites. They love to pray while standing in the synagogues and on the street corners in order to be conspicuous to others. I tell you the truth, they have already received their full reward. Don't be like them. When you pray, go to a private room, close the door, and pray to your father in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you openly. And when you pray, don't practice empty repetition as the pagans do, thinking that so many words will cause them to be heard. Don't be like them. Your father knows what you need even before you ask him. So then pray. So then pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be held in all. May your kingdom come and may your will be done as on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, this, give us the bread we need each day and forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sinned against us. And do not allow us to be led into temptation, but save us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you forgive those who offend you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive those who offend you, then neither will your Father forgive you. And when you fast, don't put on a sad face like the hypocrites do. They wear somber faces to make sure everyone notices their fasting. I tell you the truth, they have already received their full reward. Don't be like them. When you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so others won't know you're fasting. Yet your Father will see what you do in secret, and He will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Instead, store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moss nor rust destroy and where thieves cannot break in and steal. Your heart will be wherever your treasure is. The body's source of light is the eye. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is diseased, your whole body will be filled with darkness. And... And if the light in your body is really darkness, how deep is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hear, hate one and love the other, or he will cling to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both, serve both God and riches. And that's going to conclude our reading uh, for this morning. 
we will uh, continue tomorrow uh, reading from the Sermon on the Mount. That's what we've been into this morning. Uh, a little way through that sermon, that beautiful uh, sermon from Jesus that was radically different from anything anyone had heard uh, up to that point. Radical for us as well today. Love your enemies. Do good to those that hate you. Uh, it's not about your outward appearance. It's not all about others see. It's about your heart attitude. Jesus was flipping everything upside down on their heads. Uh, radical message. He came to fulfill the law. Not get rid of it. Be perfect like your Father in Heaven is perfect. Who can do that? That's why He came. That's why Jesus came. Only He can do it. Only by our faith and trust in Him and repentance of sin can we be right with God. Is that you this morning? I pray it is. Have a blessed day today. Give God all the glory in it. Soli Deo Glory.